Right, hello everyone. Welcome back to the Cabo Cast. We still need to think of a better name. We still do. Yeah, we do. But we're yeah. back. And you may notice that there is not two of us today. There is three. The owner of Locomotive Maxim has dropped in, hopefully on a permanent basis. It's currently a loan deal with an option to buy. But welcome to the podcast, Maxim. It's good to have you here. Good evening. And now, because we didn't talk about Man United enough, we have two Man United fans instead of one on here. I'm not alone in my depression. Let's yeah. go. You gave it depressing. The, the shirt I'm wearing brings depression as well. Yeah. And for our one Spotify <laughs> listener, it's an England shirt. Oh, yeah, that's true. Hello, one You're Spotify. You're actually outnumbered because Max is wearing an England shirt as well. No, I've been done in here. You've been done. But <laughs> You've been done. I mean, to be fair, there's a lot done. that play for both. But That's true. England, England, England is a good shout, but we're not really talking international today. We will talk about Man United a bit, but don't worry, it's not another Man United episode. They're just part of the discussion, okay? And don't worry, they're not part of the Team of the Year discussion. They're miles away from that. Um, but we've got a lot to get through. We have got many tournaments to go through. We've got not only the Premier League, the EFL Cup, we've got AFCON. Um, we might have a little bit of some of the other leagues as well. We might have to argue about which leagues are Farmers Leagues and which ones are not. Is the PL now a Farmers League? We'll find are out. Are we the Farmers? <laughs> are we the Farmers? Exactly. Are we the Farmers? That is the issue. But yeah, we have a lot to go through. We had some mental games yesterday. We've got teams that... Are they cheating? Are they not? Chelsea have been mudded by a new rule. Not mudded as much as Ghana at AFCON, but mudded. Still mudded. Yeah. I think there's only one place to start, and that is with one of the most surprising results I think the Premier League's ever seen. Because if there was one side that could be leading with 40 seconds left and lose, you'd expect it to be Tottenham? Yeah, Yeah, not the other way around. It seemed like a passing of the torch, I think. (laughs) You are now the bottle (laughs) chop. In a sense. It was just, I don't I was watching the Man U game, and I just saw the score, yeah, so it was 2-1, right. and then it yeah. came up in the corner, full-time 3-2, and it was like, what have I missed? Yeah, what, yeah. what happened here then? Yeah, not like, yeah. like, you guys were saying that the seconds left in this 2-1 to Leicester. How has this happened? Yeah. Well, the thing is, I think it's, like, reflective of how good Conte's been at Spurs. He has, he's been it brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't deny I that. Think, he's fixed. No. He's fixed the mentality first. Yeah, because any Spurs team in the past fifty years would have gone on to lose two one or even three one. Yeah, they still think, got knocked Conte, out of the Conference League. Let's focus on the positives here. I think Conte's Spurs have got the right mentality. They might not have the skill. They might collapse. Yeah. They might capitulate. But they will. Of course, they the will. Moment, it's the history of the Tottenham. At the moment, they have the right mentality. Yeah, yeah, and no, they have. Belief in the manager. Yeah, I the think that's is, what. Yeah, go on, Matt. Kind of, that's kind of what Conte went in there to do, like. Yeah. Like under under Nuno, you, like when, I remember when we played them, it's quite a relatively even game. I thought, and then we scored, and then suddenly they couldn't play football after that. Um, oh, and that, that was kind of the culture of of Nuno, I think, at the at the club. But now under Conte, who's kind of renowned for being this kind of no-nonsense, you know, strict kind of manager, I think he's really regimented the kind of almost big egos in a sense of, of, of Spurs. I think Harry Kane, for example, basically wanted to go. Then there was a period where he didn't want to play, obviously, because he wanted to go to City. And now Conte is trying to kind of get the best out of him. He scored, didn't he, at Leicester? Yeah, he scored, he scored a few times one. now. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, it's um, mentality and again. Yeah, and obviously, yeah, yeah. And obviously they're a better team when he's fit and firing, obviously. There's uh, probably think, been conversations. Oh, sorry to interrupt. There's I'll, probably been conversations no, no. behind the scenes with yeah. Conte and Kane going, look, give me till the end of the season and you can be off and we'll yeah. cash in you. Yeah, um, definitely. Just, just get, give me till the end of the season. Yeah, yeah. without a number nine, Spurs are literally rubbish. They're just Son. Yeah. They're just Son FC. Yeah, it is, But mm. if they have two up front that can actually score, then it's better. Yeah, yeah. that's true. I think 
I think more of a miracle is somehow getting something out of the defence when you're dealing with Eric Dyer, Davidson, Sanchez, Emerson. Yeah, the only ben one of their, the only d- person they have that can actually defend is Romero. He's the only one that can actually defend. Yeah, I like Hoiberg. Yeah, and he's, I he's he's decent. Yeah, he's, he's, yeah, he's, he's decent. decent. He is a class yeah. DM. Yeah. The thing is, again, Conte plays a back five, but has a very good defensive system. Perfect yeah, does, yeah. 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 He's got Eric Dyer spraying 80 yard passes. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I mean, I mean, how he's managed to convert Ben Davis into a left sided centre back, I will never understand. I thought Ben Davis was finished, I'll be honest. So did I. So did I. But somehow he's managed to revitalise him. Again, that's probably a mentality thing. It all comes back that to mentality. Just, just miracle work. Yeah, no mentality midgets at Tottenham. None of them. No. Not anymore. Not anymore. It's just mental. But the thing is, if there's 40 seconds left and you score, you're like, we've got a draw that he's going to blow up as soon as we start playing again. Yeah. But he didn't. It's mental. You've got yeah. a question, Brendan Rogers, though. What went wrong? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you concede two goals in like a minute? Yeah, what was it, like 70 seconds or whatever? Yeah, 80 I mean, seconds, 20 goals. 80 seconds, there you go. That's not... I you, feel, you shouldn't be doing that. I feel like that game kind of summed up Leicester's last two seasons. Going well, yeah, going well, going well, going well. But Bang. A few seconds left. Last game of the season. No, gone. No. <laughs> Always missing out yeah. on the top four. I know. No. Yeah, yeah. I don't think they'll be there this year. We're going to talk about the top four oh, after man. we spoke about our other game. Um, and who we think is going to get there but I wouldn't be counting Leicester right now no I wouldn't and that other game is one that I don't think I need to comment on that much when I'm joined by two Man United fans Um, Thomas Frank won't want to talk about it he seemed very upset in his post-match that was funny I I, I actually really like Thomas Frank I'm not going to lie (laughs) that was really funny that that um well, what were the comments you made? The first half, we, we, we won the first half, battered them. They're very lucky yeah. to win the second half. Yeah. It's like, oh, we'll ignore the fact we scored three. We'll ignore the fact as well that we didn't spend a penny on any of the players who scored. We'll ignore yeah. that. <laughs> Commenting on Jane Sancho costing 70 million and not playing. <laughs> well, how did that affect the game then? The thing is, how does that matter? Brentford are like a nice team, and I think everyone's got a nice little soft yeah. spot. Brentford. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't. But, Thomas Frank coming out <laughs> saying that Sancho didn't play and he's a £70 million player when it's kind of... It was relatively common knowledge. Ranić said it before the game that Sancho was at a funeral. Yeah, for, I was, believe yeah. his auntie. And yeah. it's a bit rude to just kind of throw... It is a bit, A yeah. person who's out for personal reasons. Yeah. I'll, I'll be honest, I don't think he knew that. I don't think he... Look, researched he it. He but didn't. you don't yeah. comment on that kind of thing if you don't research it. Then, yeah, that's true. You just you just don't say anything then. Yeah, you yeah. Continue with your comments about how they won the first half, and yeah. it, was real, it was a real See, great. That's like Graham Potter See, coming out every week and going. At least we had more XG boys. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. You can just say it. that. Just yeah, don't, yeah. don't don't mention the opposition's players. Yeah. What's it got to do with you? Yeah. Like in fairness, he was right. <laughs> They did batter us in the first 45. They did. He was right. We, the whole thing just kind of threw me off. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a bit annoying. It was just a dumb comment, really. Yeah. It was a bit of a stupid comment. But and the talk, way he kind yeah. of phrased everything was a bit... Like, yeah, it was passion. Just, I, know, I know it was passion. Yeah. He, but you'd, you'd think that we'd won in like... Well, it'd be very Man United to win in like the 97th minute with a dodgy yeah. penalty. Yeah. But... Like, like, did, uh, Harry Maguire... Bounce it off the his head goal. Exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. But we didn't. Drops it we we come bat. out and we come out in the second half and we to use the well we didn't destroy them, but we matched the intensity. And Credit to Ranić though, where it's due, same players, yeah. completely different performance. Yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. Learned from his mistake against Villa of yeah. when you're two new up. Juno yep. was a dangerous scoreline. He went to his back three. Not as dangerous he went as West Ham being 3 nil up. Or back five, yeah, yeah. He went to his back three. Mm. Pissed off Ronaldo. Yeah. But... Yeah, he did, yeah. On the game. So, kudos to the yeah. manager. Yeah, the think... only disappointing thing yeah. is the fact that we didn't keep a clean sheet. But, yeah. to well, be fair, it was a Sunday League bobble goal. Yeah. So, Harry Maguire comes on the pitch and we concede. What do you expect? Yeah, but... <laughs> 
there's a few things was... I can kind of say from the outside, not yeah. as a Man United fan. One is Ronaldo obviously thinks he's bigger than the club at this point, the way he acted when he came off. Yeah, I think Ronaldo does that all the time. It's I just he's done the same at Juve. He's, he's done, done it. Same yeah. at There's a difference between yeah. he wants to play and being professional. It's not professional. Like, yeah. Cavani would it's never true, come off and do that. I think I think his I think in his mind he's thinking these lot are there for the taking. I'm Ronaldo. Like, he's literally let me been, have a goal. He's literally been tracking back doing yeah. all the dirty work for 70 minutes for there to be yeah. 20 minutes where the game probably opens up and he can get a yeah. goal and he's been subbed. Yeah. Yeah. I just yeah. think if Martial did the same thing got subbed off or even Rashford or Sancho, everyone would be slating them. Yeah, yeah, but the thing, yeah. With, the thing with Martial is that he doesn't track back. He doesn't work hard. So yeah, Ronaldo, and, and, the other, and the other thing with... Really put in the gr- graft. Yeah, and the other thing with Ronaldo is Ronaldo, there's a reason he's the top goal scorer of all time. It's the fact that he's relentless. He, yeah. he won't rest. If he scores three, he'll be disappointed he didn't score four. Exactly. Um, and he's that kind of player. So to him, he doesn't see it as being rested for 20 minutes after coming back from a hip, uh, hip flexor injury. He's yeah. thinking, well, that's 20 minutes wasted. I could have scored in those 20 minutes. That's just the way he thinks. I, think I, I haven't taken badly to that, I don't think, at all, because I've seen him do it a lot. He just doesn't like coming. He's just one of those players. He doesn't like yeah, himself doesn't. off. He doesn't like coming off. But I just, I just think he can deal with it in a better way rather than yeah, pub- rather than I'm sure he can. publicly kind of un- not really undermining the manager, but it kind of is if that makes sense. I think yeah. the best like point to go back to is the game. I don't know if anyone watched it. Portugal against Ireland, where yeah. Ronaldo yeah. scores in the ninety something minute after literally yeah. doing nothing all game. Yeah, yeah. and that is Ronaldo. In kind of nutshell. in a nutshell sometimes yeah. he will literally yeah. do a lot of the dirty work which won't get talked about he'll do the tracking back he'll do the running he'll do the pressing he'll do everything and then no one will give him credit but when he scores the goal everyone gives him credit so yeah. for that performance yesterday well, they call him a tapping they, he won't get the credit for that he deserves but he oh. was doing a lot of the dirty yeah. work for the team I mean, I mean Greenwood's goal Really, the the people who are going to get praised for that, the second goal, is are Bruno and Greenwood. The people who should be praised for it are Scott McTominay, who I want to talk about in a bit, and, and Ronaldo. Because McTominay plays the ball forward, Ronaldo with a, just, to be honest, magical piece of work. The I little chest flick. Control, yeah. I don't understand that. Yeah. He, he, the little chest flick round the corner, I mean, I don't think there's another player, certainly on the pitch, who could have done that. Definitely on the pitch, if not wider than the pitch. But yeah. That that doesn't the, the Ronaldo might get talked about more, but realistically, it's going to be Greenwood who takes the plaudits for work that other people did. Yeah, which I think could, like as as you said about you know doing the hard work and not getting plaudits. I mean, Ronaldo probably does get plaudits because it is a moment of genius. But if he had just headed that ball, then he wouldn't really have thought anything different. Yeah. It's just the fact that he did it with his chest. That is going to give him a bit more plaudit. No, I mean, yeah. But I do want to mention Scott McTominay quick. Because yeah, McTominay's been uh, certainly inconsistent, let's be honest. I think at one point, Maxim, you said he would be on the bench at Brentford. And then he started, he, he actually, probably the best, well, to me, he was the best player on the pitch. Um, what was it, last night? Um, was last I night? agree. Yeah, Jesus losing track of time but yeah no I think he was best on the pitch um, and I don't say that often about McTominay but there are some games where he just comes alive but I remember the Leeds game last season where they're always between January there. and March they are yeah yeah thought is he's brilliant against utter crap yeah. and <laughs> yeah he's, he's brilliant against the Leeds side that is literally mm. open and trying to pr- play through you so yes, yeah, he, does, yeah. he doesn't need to do a lot of dirty stuff he can just no. push yeah, he's brilliant he's against the Brentford team that's somewhat tired. Yeah. He's brilliant against Burnley. But when it yeah, comes yeah. to big games, he, he can't do it. Well, no, there's yeah. no proof he can do it yet. Yeah. The, the only thing I was I was thinking about really with McTominay is his kind of work rate. And the work rate's always been there. I, I could yeah. never... The, the, I could the work never rate criticize. and the mentality is always there. Yeah, I, I, could, never, I could never criticise McTominay for his 
work rate or his passion or his whatever you want to call it, I can never criticise him for that. I used to criticise him for his first touch not always being there, his passing range not always being there, it, it just being able to be walked through in midfield. I think the thing yeah, is... Shouldn't, shouldn't be doing that. Against McTominay, he's brilliant against the Burnleys, the Brentfords, the, yes. the, the Leeds, whatever. But the thing is, any time you play anyone above Leicester in the table right now, yeah, he can't, he can't mark opposition runners. In, no. like they, they just run past him. He can't tackle. Yeah. yeah. And every time he gets the ball, I don't know, he does this like weird step over it. Yeah. Every time, and then he does a pass. Yeah, and the yeah. pass is always either sideways or backwards. He's been doing Huge, more yeah. forward passes now. Yeah. But it's always very um what's the word? Safe. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. I don't think that works in a truly yeah. magic system. Yeah, yeah. I mean the the thing we played yesterday we played four three three. Um what I couldn't what I was trying to figure out about the whole game was which one of Fred and McTominay were sitting. And which one was the progress? Because he said in the in the po- um, pre-match interview, he, said he was playing with one deep six and two progressive eights. I knew Bruno yeah. was one of the eight. That's obvious. And then it's which of the two? And I, I don't know. I still don't I know which one part, played which. It was definitely McTominay sitting. I think so. around the thirty-something minute, they swapped over with Fred, yeah. and then Fred was sitting, and we became even worse because Fred has no first touch. But then after yeah. the second half, it was a bit more consistently um, McTominay in that role. Yes. And yeah. I think I think he got a bit of a hairdryer treatment from Ranyuk for being a yeah, bit crack. Yeah. And um, he started to pass. He actually yeah. had like a pass completion rate over like 20%. Which is a miracle and in itself. He was starting to pass forward. And then he swapped with Fred again. Yeah. And he I, started almost... playing as an eight. And as yeah. an eight, Tomine is a beautiful thing. He, he, is, can, yeah. he can tackle, he can run, yeah. he can get in the box. He's he's amazing at an eight. He's, he's, he's good as six. an eight because he, because of his aggression. He's, yeah, he's, he's not a really, six. Though. He's big. He's aggressive in the tackle. He's um, and I think again for the rest of the goal as well. I think he wins the ball back. He goes past like two or three, and then rolls it off. And that's what you want to see McTominay doing. You want to see McTominay driving, is. not sitting in front of your defence being walked past because that's what he does he can't defend that's what McTominay did for the second no third goal third is goal. not what six does because no. if, if he gets dispossessed he's completely out of position yeah Brent would probably score probably or at least get a chance but yeah, yeah. Well, chance but on I, goal Look, he's a good eight not a great six yeah yeah it felt it felt like a trial run of both of them he was trying to figure out which one is, is better and I'm going to you wouldn't think now. he's been taught for two years by no. probably the greatest six in the Premier League. Yeah. In, like, I mean, true. Yeah, in training yeah. every day. You wouldn't yeah. think. No. Because he, he reminds me, actually, of Darren Fletcher. Exactly. He's a utility and player old. everywhere. Yeah. But I'm going to sound arrogant now. But if you're going to trial two players at six and we've both come out here and basically said we don't know vaguely which one's better because we can agree that McTominay's better as an eight but Fred's awful at a six then neither of them really should be playing we they need a CDM buying someone we need it's, to buy a DM yeah. yeah we do I mean it's blatantly obvious if, if you're if you're trying both of them and you figure out one of them's good at eight and the other one can't play six then it's then it's, it, it, it's glaringly obvious or what you do need is you need some like anti-aging cream and get Matic to be at least five years younger. Yeah. And he has yeah. legs and get can not, on a treadmill. and can like move sideways. Yeah, yeah. Least. Get Matic on a treadmill. Yeah, yeah. get Matic Just... and some make him younger and it'll work. Yeah. I appreciate we are turning this into a United podcast again. You uh, always so... do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We always you find always a way, do. But... You're going to get to talk about Man United a bit more. Let's go. But West Ham are involved in the conversation for this, okay? <laughs> We're going to talk about who we think will get the top four. For me, obviously, for me, obviously, City and Liverpool are in. Yeah. Are in. 
You could yeah. put question marks over Chelsea because of how they're performing at the moment. I'm, but I think they'll I'm be okay. I think they'll be I'm all right. I don't want to yeah, jinx it, but good. I don't think Chelsea will get top four. Uh, I, uh, think that, I, think I think they've been found out. I think I think um, Thomas Tuchel's out at the end of the season. Ooh. And then they'll get the hang. It wouldn't surprise... Uh, to be fair, it wouldn't that's, surprise that's me if that. It's a bit out it, there, but... It wouldn't surprise me, but... I think... I don't, I don't know. Chelsea are a weird one. Because before they played us, they were so good. And we were talking about them charging for the title and could they be stopped and all this. And then after they played us, they seemed inherently broken. They no don't no Chelsea. I honestly yeah. think it's about Rhys James being injured. I was going to say, yeah, because what last night they must have played what double wing backs of Alonso and Aspi Quater. As Asby, no offense to him, he's done them great. So Asby should not still be starting for Chelsea in any position. Yeah, if if he starts, if he starts, he's got to be like a right side centre back. He's got to be right side centre back if he starts. He but I don't think he should start. No. Is there a Chilwell out though as well? Yeah, yeah, Chilwell's out as well. So, so the two lost, first first fullbacks are out. And Chalaber's out. You've, and Chalaber as well, yeah. You've lost all your pace down the side, really. They call him like, slow. the Chelsea fans. You're going with Alonslow, who who got, let's be honest, absolutely destroyed, in the words of Thomas Frank, destroyed by Tarek Lamptey. And then we've got um, Dave. And then, and then you've got Dave on the other side, who is also pitifully slow. And that but doesn't is, work. That's, Reece, but being that reliant on Reese James, it can't be yeah, sustainable. It can't be. But at the same time, you've seen how effective they are when they do have their first choice fullbacks. Because those fullbacks work extensively hard. Like it's yeah. ridiculous it's how much five, work they go they, through. They, yeah, they, they do put a lot of they are and, and glue. It's more than that. It, it's it's not only the work rate and the kind of distance they cover, but it's also the, the quality on the crosses you've got and I think we saw it at the start of the season before all the inter stuff come in when you've got Reese James like or Ben Shaw whichever one at top quality burning down the side and whipping in a ball to Romelu Lukaku right the big shiny bald head Romelu Lukaku it's very difficult to deal with because Lukaku for all of his as you know United fans have to play left wing Waning at waning at two hundred and eighty pounds, right? Trying to play at left wing with with the first touch of a trampoline, it doesn't work. But sticking in the box, uh, he's got all. He's going to give all kinds of problems, and we saw that at the start of the year. I think without those two fullbacks, Chelsea will really struggle, and they have really struggled. You've seen it. I don't know how long Reese James is out for, but I have no it's, idea. It's something they don't know yet. I don't know. But I think Chelsea won't get top four because uh, they're, they're, they're a Jorginho injury away from totally falling apart. Jorginho's not even that good. Yeah. But he, he puts in the work and in their midfield. I'll we be, we are going to talk honest. a lot about Jorginho later. We are, yeah. yeah. But I'll, I'll but, be honest. I think I actually think Chelsea's best midfield, and I know I'll, I'll get slandered by Chelsea fans here, but I think Chelsea's best midfield is Kanta and Kovacic. I really do. I th- I think Kovacic gets through as much, if not more, work as well. I'd say more work than Jorginho does. And this way, you allow Kante to do what he's really, really good at, which is playing as a six. Yeah. Kante as an eight doesn't make any sense. I just have to. Just, it just yeah. doesn't. Kante is Fred, who can play six. He is. Yeah. He's exactly that. I've always called Fred the. Terrible version of Kante. Yeah, like, Fred's like, like Townland Kante. He is, yeah. But like you're looking at Kante, and, and I'm, I know Kante can drive forward, but he was the best. I mean, let's be honest, he was the best defence midfielder in the Premier League, if not in the world, for many, many years. Yeah. Like, for a few solid years, he was about four years. years. And then suddenly, Jorginho comes in and takes his role, and that just didn't make any sense because he's better than Jorginho. Yeah. That. So why then? Kovacic will bomb up and down, he'll get the work done, and he's got a real good quality on the ball as well. And Off he's not pitifully off slow off and doesn't and doesn't need just penalty. Is another thing. Yeah. But Kovacic, yeah, Kovacic has is passing. Really good at passing. Yeah. So and he always looks for like a forward pass, I think, as well. Mm, yeah. I'd I'd be starting them too. For me, I think. 
I think obviously you can argue about Saul, I suppose, for the I don't know, for the channel. But um no. <laughs> no. He's he's just not quite as good as Kovacic. Saul with Chelsea hasn't role. worked. Like no, at all. Really they ain't like, sent him back. Probably. He's a class player, we all know it. Yeah, yeah. Gotta send him back. Yeah. yeah. I still think Chelsea gets up for though. I think they've just got enough, I think, Chelsea to to get through. I think if, I don't know how long the two fullbacks are out for, but if they can get Reese James back fairly soon, then they'll be fine. As yeah. soon as they get him back, they'll be flying again. Hang on. Right, that so means we have spot left of who's finishing fourth or third if Chelsea finish so, fourth. Matt, are we agreed on third for Chelsea, me and you? I would, yeah, I would think so. I think a distant third. Well, I, yeah. I actually think, I feel like Liverpool and Chelsea are going to just run in lead to their own, but I think Liverpool not winning really cover either. I think Liverpool will be comfortable enough. That's what I mean. I, th- I think City will be comfortable at the top. I think Liverpool will be comfortable in second, but way, way below City, I think. Well, not way below, but a fair few points below. Enough points Chelsea that they're not saying. threatening them. Yeah, yeah. And then Chelsea will be non-threatening to Liverpool, but still clear of fourth, I think. And then fourth is going to be in. Jesus, that's going to be some free-for-all scrap between about five, is it? I don't know. Four or five? Yeah, I have a completely different prediction, but then... I think, I think to talk about the top four, you need to talk about the Europa League and Conference League places at the same time. Yeah, you do. So who have we got fourth? Just say who it is. No reasons yet. Just who have you? Who would you put fourth right now? I don't know. Um, Manchester United fourth, but I wouldn't go with Chelsea third. So oh, you, you think Man United are going to finish third? No, I'm thinking. I'm thinking uh, Arsenal finish third. Man United finish Kieran does not like that. For the Spotify listener, Kieran is not impressed. <laughs> but, I hate I, my answer, but I think it's the I, only one that makes sense. I want to back us. I really, really, really want to back us. The thing is, we're capable of going. We are capable, but I don't know. I'm... Oh, I'm, gonna go West Ham. I'm gonna go We're West Ham. I'm gonna go West Ham. It'll keep going, I think. I'm I'm gonna go West Ham. Every everyone is gonna think I've disapproved of you because it's not Arsenal, it's not Man United. You think it's gonna be West Ham? I'll get on to why in a bit. I think it's gonna be Tottenham. Yeah, I was differing between Tottenham as well. I, I, I think we're going to finish about seventh or eighth. Yeah, I'll I give, don't know. I'll, I'll give the reasons why in a minute. But I think, yeah. I think Tottenham are going to finish fourth. I think Arsenal can't sustain what they're doing. Yeah. Um, Tottenham do have a bit of better depth. Like yeah. Ars- Arsenal, Marginally. Arsenal don't have a striker. Yeah. Which is important. Arsenal roll over against the big teams. Yeah. Um, they gave it a good go against City to be fair but they just weren't good enough yeah well, I should uh, probably explain why I've gone with Arsenal finishing third then and agree with yeah, you yeah you probably should yes please I like what Arteta's doing Arteta is literally going with his own gut and I completely back him as a non-Arsenal fan but like I like the decisions he's taking and yeah, right. doesn't want to be there he can piss off yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. It doesn't matter if he's on 300k a week, he can piss off. And yeah, he's going to do that with better any that he player. does if he's on 300k a week. And the thing is, he can do that with any player. And yeah. if they're not connected to the Arsenal project, whatever he's building, whether it collapses, whether it goes to Premier League glory, um, it's just going to be done his way. And I think yeah. the club are backing him. And. Yeah. I think they'll finish third because Spurs will collapse. Because you can't bring in Conte. Conte makes them run. He makes them like he he's been putting in the training session. And Spurs have got a lot of games in hand, so they can play twice a week. Was talking about, Ragulion was talking about his first training session at Spurs and said it was literally hell. And I don't think you can sustain that without getting substantial injuries. 
No. Bearing in mind, Harry Kane literally always gets injured at no, some point. Really well. Mr. Glass ankles. I think, exactly. I think a son injury would affect them more. So oh, I think yeah. that spurs out of top four. And then I, li- I like just what Arteta's doing. So I think they'll just keep building on whatever they're building on. Yeah. DNA or whatever it be. For me, it's a step too far for them now to finish third or fourth. They've got to do European football as well. At all. No cups, yeah. no European football. They can just focus on the league. Yeah. I think I'll, that'll be yeah. a big advantage to them. Especially with all the games in hand other teams have. I think the lack of experience is going to get to Arsenal eventually. I think in two or three years, that's a team that could be challenging. Yeah. Maybe not challenging Man City, but they should be challenging regular top four. Yeah, um, they, they already challenged for the FA Cups and that. But they should be aiming yeah. to get far in the Champions League and just attracting better staff. Because they're never, no one's ever going to be able to outspend City. United can come close, but they can't spend as much as City or Chelsea. But yeah. Liverpool and Arsenal need to, uh, need to be so much more clever about who they buy. And you can see with Arteta, it seems to be better. Like, Aubameyang was a stupid sign-in. We know that. But then when when you look at who Arteta's bringing in, it's been like Tommy Asu, Tavares, Laconga. They're yeah. young players and they are good players. And yeah. they're yeah. invested in this project. Yeah, they're not potential they're players. Thinking. But, but they are potential players, but they're potential players where, where they're at now is already very, very good. It's the yeah. fact that when you look at Arsenal, apart from maybe Lacazette, everyone in that team is going to be significantly better than they are now and they're already a great team. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It's just holding on to all of them because, yeah. like, are Man City going to want to buy Emil Smith-Rowe or Saka? Even Ramsdale, if Edison's getting on, and would they yeah, go to Man City from Arsenal? The real question is, would they want to leave Arsenal? Yeah. Do they 100% believe in the project, yeah. or do they think, like Grealish, okay, I've outgrown this club, I'm going to move for yeah. like, big money? Yeah. yeah, and I think I think Arsenal are good, I like what they're doing, but I just think, lack of experience, they still have a mistake in them. Mm. Yeah, um, every now and then they'll yeah. have a... Well, I think exactly for me they're hard. going to be fit. For me they're going to be fifth. Mm, it, it's hard. It's, yeah. it's impossible to predict. Yeah. So who would you put? Who would you have fifth then? Just missing out. Chelsea. Yeah. Matt? Ooh, controversial. Um, yeah, I'm having Arsenal fifth. I. I. I back us. I think for fifth. I think. Yeah. I think. I honest. Honestly, I think if you give me. Champions League football but no trophy or if you give me Europa League so Thursday nights again but like the FA Cup I'm taking that every day of the week I take the FA Cup every day of the week every day of the week I'm taking the FA Cup I can deal with playing on a Thursday night right I can deal with playing on a Thursday night but the, the, the idea of winning a trophy and then having the new manager come in oh yes Man United haven't won a trophy for a few years. I think we need a trophy. I am basically, the reason I don't think we'll get top four is because I honestly believe that we will focus on one of the trophies. And I don't know which one. Whether it be the Champions League, I don't think we'll win the Champions League because I'm not stupid. But I do think we've got a shot at the FA Cup. I really, really think we've got a shot. I wouldn't be surprised if Man United get a freak run to like the Champions League final. It wouldn't surprise me. It would surprise. I don't think you'll win it. No, I don't think so. And the main Do reason is defenders. When it gets yeah. to like the last ten games of the season, we're going to look at it and go, "We can finish top four. We can win the FA Cup, or we're in the semi-final of the Champions League. We can get to the final, and I we're think... going to put all our eggs in one basket." Yeah, I think I think that could happen. I think we'll be close to top four. And that's why I didn't put us in top four. I put you in top four. I put West Ham in top four because I think, I just think for some reason in my head, I think Spurs are going to have an injury because I haven't, they've had defensive injuries, but they've never, not really had an injury up front yet. Yeah. And let's be honest, glass ankles, got a glass ankle. Harry Kane has got to get an ankle injury at some point, right? It's not a prem season if he doesn't, right? I think that will, really make them struggle uh, quite a lot. Arsenal, 
I can see dropping off. As much as I like what Arteta's doing, as much as I like their players, you saw again against Liverpool tonight, they just looked blunt. They looked consistently blunt against top teams. Yeah. And to be to be challenging for top four, I'm saying this having been beaten five 0 by Liverpool and getting battered by City, right? To be challenging for top four, you really need to be challenging the best teams. Yeah. And yes, the City game was close. Let's be honest. There can be arguments about the officiating of the game, perhaps, but they weren't. It wasn't their day, maybe. But tonight against Liverpool, Liverpool stalled them with a B team. Yeah. Really. I mean... To go back to your uh, earlier point about Scott McTominay, it kind of sums up Arsenal, isn't it? He's great yeah. against... He's great yeah. against like, the just average teams, but he's just a bit blunt against yeah. four teams right yeah. now. And I don't, and I don't I think, think... I don't think you can get top four on that form. I really I don't. Think, I think Arsenal... They'll develop into a team that can consistently draw against the top four. Yeah, they'll hold yeah, the whole thing so. fair. And then I think, so. I think they'll start getting a couple of freak wins against, yeah. say, Chelsea or United. They yeah, always yeah. for some reason. Or yeah. like just like beat City at home for some reason, yeah. just randomly, with yeah. like some freak goal or something like that. They'll they'll yeah. start getting luck their way at some point. Yeah. Yeah. But I put I put West Ham in full. Because I, I, I'm, I'm going to pray and hope that you don't get an injury, right? That all lies on if Jared Bowen and Mikel Antonio stay fit. If your attacking line stays fit, you'll be okay. If it doesn't, you're in banging trouble. I am taking because... this chance to finally talk about West Ham on podcast. Go ahead. Let's do this. I Go spoke ahead. about this a little bit. But not enough. I, I am taking it. So I've heard enough about Manchester United. Go ahead. West Ham United. I wouldn't be surprised if we finished behind Wolves. I'll be honest with you. Really? Jesus. If Wolves win both their games in hand, they're level on points with us. Oh, wow. Yeah. If, but, maybe. Is. If and Paul Wolves Baku. do not concede goals. No, they don't. Mm, they're good. They're a good defensive team, actually, yeah. Yeah, for me... The only positions we can have an injury and be okay is goalkeeper and right back. They're the only places we can get an injury and be okay. Yeah. Or yeah, Cam. I think so. But, yeah, Cam, you're fine. I yeah. think West Ham, Zuma is such a good player for them, I think. He it's is, both yeah. the centre backs because Dawson is a backup. If you buy a player for two million in the Premier League, they are a backup centre back. Yeah. Yeah. And Diop is just awful. Yeah, he does seem fairly... Yeah. Rather than technical um, ability, I think it's his confidence. But he just doesn't think before he does anything. No. He never looks... He, he does look before he passes. I'm sorry, but he does remind me of Eric Bai. He does as well. I thought he you were going to say Titus Bramble. No, no, no. no. Not, I'm not going to put him on that level. Right. But Eric Bai and, and, and Diop have that thing in common of stupidity. Yeah. They yeah. just... Act up of just... Doing something yeah. completely random, like they an just, overhead kick in the box. Yeah, they just yeah. do stuff that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, he does weird stuff every game. Dawson does it as well, but it's the fact that Dawson is yeah. meant to be a backup centre back who's playing against Kid yeah. during the FA Cup. Yeah, it's the fact that one that sticks out to me is last season. It might even have been season before. Three one up against Brighton. Yeah, long ball comes over. No one anywhere near. Literally, like it's bouncing back to Fabianski. Fabianski calls for it. It's almost rolling on the floor. Diop does a Phil Jones-style header past his own goalkeeper. For no reason. Fabianski's already called that he wants the ball. There's Bailly coming out. There you go. That's the kind yeah. of thing you'd expect Bailly to do. Yeah. Except Bailly would get injured while he does it. Yeah, but find me, a way to injure him still. Yeah. He would, like, scratch his spine doing it or something like yeah. that. Our squad is not big yeah. enough to play just no, the Premier no. League games. With the yeah, Europa League me. games as well, maybe an FA Cup run. Mm. Our squad is just not big enough. Put, and are you going to put all the eggs in the uh, Barcelona basket? David, no, yeah. David Moyes is going to try and win everything. Yeah, he David showed Moyes it by playing playing, f- playing full strength in the FA Cup against Leeds' B team. Yeah, um, he's not going to, and 
Jared Bowen is going to end up playing twice a week every week. Yeah. I would rather have Antonio, but I don't think it'd actually be that as bad as people think if he gets injured because Bowen will just go up front. And hopefully yeah. Ben Rama or Four Nails would play and not, not just, I pray. I don't know why he does it. We have Ben Rama on the bench sometimes, sometimes even Oko Flex, and he brings on Yarmolenko. He's your um, Jared Bowen backup, isn't he? As far as I understand that. Yeah. He literally always comes on in like the last 20 minutes. The thing that annoys me with Yarmolenko is that he's not terrible. He just doesn't care. He has. When he puts on a Ukraine shirt, he gains the passion. He gains the aggression. And he turns into a really good footballer. See, there is games for us where he's not been great, but he's put in the effort and the fans really get behind him then. It's when he comes on and just walks up and down the sideline. But I think... I think, it's, um, I think it's just like a Premier League thing. I just don't think he's made for the Premier League. But yeah, no. I think... I don't want to point fingers at players, but I don't think you can get Europa... I don't think you can even really get Europa League if you've still got Masuaku, Diop and Armalenko getting minutes. You do, you do definitely want to point fingers at Masuaku. And though. let... Maybe. But the thing is, if we... To be fair to Arthur, he does always try. He's just not very good. He just doesn't know the position. It's like <laughs> it's like some it's like some Man United players. I think like McTominay, he always tries. He's just not always good. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I can't fault him for effort. He's just unfortunate. Unfortunately, I think his time's come to move on. Yeah, I think. But so. I can't. I can't fault the effort he's put in because he's gone ages without playing and still carried on with training. But I just think we don't have enough quality. And if we get yeah. if we get an injury in the middle of the park, then we're going to start playing Lanzini CDM again, like we did against Leeds, or we're going to be playing Mark Noble. And Mark what? Noble every what? week is fine, but Mark Noble twice a week will not work. Alex Crowell. What happened to Alex Crowell? David Moyes just acts like he's not there. He's just not there. I, I think remember Bake. <laughs> he's on loan. I believe if he plays a certain amount of games, we have to sign him, which is why oh, he doesn't oh. play. Oh right, <laughs> yeah. That one then. So we'll we'll, we'll play Lanzini CDM instead. But yeah, for yeah. me, it's just we don't have enough squad depth to compete with anyone. What I mean, is um? What is Declan Rice's like injury history? Because he hardly ever gets he's got injured. injured once. He? he got injured once for about five weeks, and it's because he got he got a really really bad tackle on him against Southampton. Yeah, so that wasn't really. Yeah, he's been injured once. Suchek's been injured Recurring. once, and that's when he crashed into the post. Oh yeah, I remember that. One. Um. The injury that really cost us is Cresswell, and the fact is, it didn't need to, because instead of starting Masuaku, we could have just started Ben Johnson, and we would have been fine. Yeah. Yeah, and eventually he changed it, and he brought Johnson back in, and we won again. But Masuaku yeah. needs to be played as a left winger and not a left back. When he comes on yeah. as a left winger, it's okay. It's when he comes on at left back, he puts you at liability, because him and Diop, I don't know how they do it, they make each other worse. Yeah, they do. It's like a multiplier. Like, if Masawaku <laughs> plays next to <laughs> Zuma, yeah. next to you play Masawaku next to Zuma, Masawaku's not too bad. You play Diop next to Cresswell, Diop isn't too bad. But together, oh. there's just something that happens between them. <laughs> They're just terrible together, yeah. I know. I know. I know, I know but what you mean. I'm not going to talk about West Ham for too long. I just think there's too many issues with us. I think we're firing on too many fronts that our squad isn't big enough. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, it might come down to David Moyes just going, we can win everything and then winning yeah. nothing. We yeah, that's nothing. The but we have one recognised we have one recognised striker. Um, yeah. We're an injury away from having a youth player playing centre back. Oh god, yeah. Uh, yeah. Or it's going to get to the point where we have to move Declan Rice to centre back. Yeah, he that's would do a decent job though. And we are sacrifice and we are sacrificing Suchek's forward skills to let Rice go forward and look good. Yeah, that's the thing. That's a bit. I, I I thought that was weird. Like I hadn't really looked at I like, West Ham overly. Yeah. But every time I had, it felt like last season Suchek was bolting into the box, picking yeah. up all the go- like picking up goals and that. And now he's not. And, and you've I, seen and I didn't it. Really know when why, Rice but... has been rested for no ball, which is mainly in Europe, but also against Watford, Suchek has scored. Yeah. Last season, Declan Rice was most definitely the six. Definitely. They changed Suchek now. Yeah. yeah, and you didn't have Vlasic, but you had who was playing like the cam. It, it was Lingard. kind of Lingard. Yeah, it was Lingard, 
It was fringe. Yeah, sure. It was normal. No, normally it was Lingard, four hours Bowen. Yeah. But now we've got Suchank as the six, Rice as the eight, and Vlasic as the ten. Vlasic plays left. Oh, yes, he plays left attack in mid. Lanzini oh, in the middle. Oh, and I've got to say, Lanzini has been brilliant. Lanzini is absolutely class. He's just so calm on the ball and he really links everything together. So I'm glad he's doing well and he's back. Yeah. But I think Vlasic is going to be like four nails, where his second season is going to be a lot better than his first. And Vlasic oh, has really? the effort and stuff. It's just refining his final product. And I think he'll get there. I think he'll just take a season to settle mm. in. But I don't know what's going to happen with us. So I trust David Moyes, but I just don't think we have the resources. Because we have money to spend. We have about 70 million to spend in the transfer market, and we're just not. We're just not. And you know in January you're not, you're not going to get anything good. But Adam Vlasic is available. And he plays for the other team that Daniel Kutinsky owns. Like, surely you can is just it that hard? Move. Nat Phillips is available for 15 million. Yeah. The latest room with us is that we're going to bring in Ben Berrison. Oh, no, sorry, Ben Berrison, Diaz. Yeah, you've got to include the Diaz or he's awful. And Nat yeah, Phillips. Come with Diaz. Yeah, Nat Phillips isn't bad. Nat but isn't, is isn't Nat Phillips 15 million great? Yeah, I think so. I think he's good. I think he's worth about I 10. Think... Oh, how old is he? 24. Oh, he's 24. Jesus, I thought he was like 20. Yeah, so did everyone um, else. Build for the next, like, three World Cups or whatever. Yeah. Settled. Phillips and Rice. Because they yeah, play together. Yeah. It is. So, it might not even be that bad of a deal. We have to see. We'll have to see. But speaking of Rice, should we talk about the thief? Well, he's not in it, but it brings me it brings me very nicely onto the team of the year. Smooth strange transition, but yeah, it does. And the thief and the, not not the FIFA team of the year because that's the A trying to sell packs. Yeah, yeah, that's the FIFA yeah. Pro team of the year. The actual team of the year. Which also looks suspiciously like they're trying to get people to sell packs. It does. It does. We do love the 3-3-4 three, three, system. Right. So, for those of you that don't know, the 11 is Donna is um No, that's my... Okay, I'm reading out my 11, but Donna Rimmer is still in it. Um, <laughs> it's in a 3-3-4 three, three, formation, which obviously works very well in-game. Yes. We've got Alaba, Bonucci and Diaz. You missed the keeper. Uh, Donna oh. Rimmer. Oh, cool. Um, Kevin De Bruyne, Jorginho oh, and Kante. Yeah. Then Haaland, Ronaldo, Messi and Lewandowski. And as a United fan, I want to say first, Salah was robbed. Salah was oh, robbed. Oh, 100%. 100%. Salah was robbed. Let's be honest, 100%. Salah was completely and utterly robbed. Absolutely. Absolutely. But look, there are so yes. many strange things about that team. So we've already talked about Salah. The fact that Salah isn't in there. It's a yeah. bit and we'll talk about our we'll, we'll talk about our own team after we go through the bunch yeah. of awful calls of this one. The the one that really really confuses me above all of them is it's not Alaba actually. Alaba's a weird one because Alaba won the sex duffel at Bayern and then wasn't recognised and now he's moved to Real. Doesn't really do much and is in the team yet. Yeah. We'll ignore. But that one's not as annoying as the goalkeeper. Now, the reason it's annoying isn't the fact that I don't like Donnarumma. I I've, I've like said the whole Donnarumma. time that either of them deserve it. Yeah, both, either of them deserve it. That's fine, right? Donnarumma being in the, in the team of the year, I'm fine with. What I'm not fine with is that Donnarumma is in the team of the year, but the best goalkeeper was given to Mendy. Can somebody who isn't the only thing I can me... Think of is they wanted to give two goalkeepers like equal recognition, put one in the team of the year and give one the you award. You actually get... The thing is, the team of the year is more prestigious than winning the goalkeeper yeah, for a while. But, but, it, but, it, but it inherently contradicts itself. Exactly. Yeah. It should you're just saying, be the same goalkeeper for both. Yeah. And so you're you saying, you're the saying then... You're saying that Edward Mendy is the best goalkeeper in the world, but he doesn't get into the best team in the world. Or and vice versa, happens. you're saying Donnarumma gets into the yeah. best team in the world, but he's, but he's not, not a great team. keeper, and Mendy's exactly. better. How? In, how are there? <laughs> I don't know. That wasn't English. But... It sums what, up your confusion brilliantly. In, in, in what? They're there? 
Do you see what I mean? It doesn't make sense. It inherently contradicts itself. It makes yeah. zero sense. It's a paradox. To have a different goalkeeper in both slots. Because what you're saying then is basically they don't know which one's better than the other, so they're giving it to both. Yeah, they're going to split it, into it. They're going to do double like, gold medal. It's like the Olympic Tokyo, the Tokyo Olympic high, high jump. jump. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's exactly the same. Yeah. The thing is, I don't even have a fault with the players. The players, they choose whatever. That I don't know the criteria. The players are sometimes picked at random. I, I have a problem with the formation. What is 3-3-4? Three, three, what is 3-3-4? Three, three, that, that's basically them saying, well, there are too many good attackers, so we're just going to stick all of them. That's in. the kind of thing that but Guardiola that, that, would do in the Champions League final. He would, he would, yeah. In real life, you would not have any fullbacks. No. Like, you, would, you wouldn't if you played 3-3-4. Three, three, or you'd no. have one centre-back. Yeah, and they haven't done that in their like FIFA. No, it, it's odd. They, they've it's, just it's gone with the defenders. weirdest formation. Yeah, they've just gone with defenders, midfielders, and attackers. I suppose, but I reckon if they were to do it right, realistic. they should have done it three four three with Messi yeah. in the midfield. Maybe it would make yeah. more sense. It yeah. would make a lot more sense, even if they wanted to use the same players. Yeah, yeah. It just odd. Oh, but I mean. I'm not overly annoyed at, but is it Benucci who's in there? It should yeah. be Benucci. Chiellini for me. It probably it should, should be Chiellini. Chiellini. But I'm not overly annoyed at no. either of the Italians getting in there, to be honest. I think they deserve it. I, I've said before, and I don't know if I've said it on here before, but I think the two Italian centre-backs deserve to be in that team, or at least one of them does, more than Donnarumma does. Because to be honest, yeah. at the Euros, Donnarumma saved a couple of penalties, fair enough. But generally in games, he didn't do much. It's the Alison Ellison paradox of Alison and Ellison look brilliant because the defenders in front of them are brilliant. Yeah. It, it, they don't do much, so they look good because their save ratio is low, or high, sorry, but they don't make many saves. Yeah, exactly. So it, it, it's a paradox. The two centre-backs for Italy are very good because they're yeah. very experienced. They're, proper they're, they're... proper old-school warriors. As well. Yeah. So they're, you can see, see the, kind of, the celebrations when they clear something off the line or, or even just they just clear across or whatever they, they, they basically hug and kiss it's brilliant it's brilliant to see but um, yeah it, it's that's what you want in a centre back isn't that? Uh, and that's yeah. kind of disappearing now so shall we have a but, chat about who we'd put in the team yeah I think so Donnarumma oh, yeah. and Mendy we've spoken about enough yeah and by the way you, you can pick your formation as long as it's not 3-3-4 three, three, uh Right, I'm gonna. Okay, yeah. I've gone with four. Then. I've gone with a traditional four three three. I'm gonna go four three three as well. I think. Four three three. Yeah. I'm gonna go with Donnarumma. I'm not gonna complain if anyone goes with Mendy. I'm gonna go Mendy. I think it should be Donnarumma just for the Euros win. But then you can just go Mendy won the Champions League. Yeah, that's the thing. I kn- I honestly don't care about what people have won. Yeah. yeah. Fair Benjamin, I, I prefer Donnarumma. As much as I don't want to talk about him, a certain left back that played for Man City won the FA Cup, won the FA Cup Premier League, and champ. He, he didn't win the Champions League, but he won the Premier League in the World Cup in the, the same World year. Cup played about three whatever, games. Yeah. Doesn't mean yeah. he's good. Yeah. And yeah, like for me, with certain other teams, I'm, 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 I don't want to say his name because I don't want to talk about him right now because he's a midfielder but we've got to talk about him now I think the prime example is Jorginho Jorginho do yeah. the back four and then go into the midfield Jorginho yeah, is just an that. Italian Mark Noble let's just do the back four before we start name and shaming some oh, Italian midfielders before you annoy every Italian <laughs> quickly move on quickly Mark, right. back four. Mark Noble can tackle better so yeah back four right just name your back four <laughs> 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 Cancelo, Diaz, Chiellini and Trent Yeah, I agree I have the exact same uh, I, The only thing I was trying to think of is the other centre-back other than Diaz but yeah, I think Chiellini's probably the right pick I so, I wouldn't yeah. mind if it was really good I wouldn't mind if it was Benucci I would go with um, I wouldn't go with Diaz uh, I think he just plays too well in a system I think Rudiger is actually the better centre-back because Rudiger's improved so much. I'd, I'd go with Rudiger. Uh, so it's Cancelo, Rudiger, Chiellini, Trent. Fair enough. Yeah. So no I'm one's saying... put Hakimi in. 
No one put a Kiwi as a right winger. <laughs> no one put a Kiwi in by chance. So Kiwi is a right winger. What about all the PSG guys? Come on. So Kiwi is a right winger. <laughs> I know. Right, so, midfield. I, to be fair, so is Trent. So is Trent, really, but at least he plays right back. All right, you guys can go yeah. first with the midfield. He's right back. Go on, Max, Jim. Midfield. Uh, midfield He's going to Bruno Fernandes, isn't he? Uh, Declan Rice, Kante, and Bruno. I'd have, I think I'd have Kimmich, Kante, and Muller. In mine. Mine is... Strange. Mark Noble. <laughs> um. Yeah, Mark Noble, Saul. <laughs> Nicola Vlasic. <laughs> uh, yeah. I've got Declan Rice, N'Golo Kante and Nicola Barella. Yeah, Barella, actually. Yeah, Barella, fair enough. None of us have gotten certain Italian hop, skip and jump merchant. No, I haven't. I think because... um, Kimmich is actually a really good shout. Yeah. yeah, I think I think Muller's a brilliant yeah. shout. I think I think the Bundesliga is. I I, I used to sound German. I Bayern German only get recognition when they win the Champions League. Yeah, yeah. So I I had to like look at German football. I watched German football for a while, mm-hmm. and the amount of underrepresentation that especially Bayern get on the kind of world stage is untrue. It's unreal. The the amount of like goals and assists that Muller get and no one cares. He's done it literally year in year out and no one cares. Just while we're talking about the German league, can I just point out that are they good or is it a low level league? Because Sergi Nabry wasn't good enough for Tony Pulis. Well, yeah, but also Sergi Nabry scored four against a certain London club who were white, didn't he? So, yeah, but then Masuaku have put in a good performance against them, so that that's true. But um, no disrespect, no, Arthur. The Bundesliga is a weird one because every game isn't easy, but at the same time, like every game is intense. Yeah, it's just that some teams don't have the quality. That yeah, other teams do. They just need to stop like, buying, I, just buying the best players from yeah, their rivals. Like, yeah, that's. Year. The, that's, that's the thing with the Bundesliga. It's a feeder system. So Bayern are significantly bigger than any other club in the Bundesliga. So as soon as someone comes in, like, ah, oh, Leipzig, you've got Uf Meccano, you've got Nagelsmann, we'll have them. Like, it happens all the yeah. time. Dortmund, you have Goethe, you have Lewandowski, they're ours now. And Hummels. Like, it happens, happen, and Hummels, yeah, it happens all the time. And that's the only thing about the Bundesliga that's really off-putting to a British audience. It's the fact that there is one club that is bigger than everybody else. And even Dortmund, Dortmund have a sit cycle where they get some really good players, really good youth talent, they challenge, challenge, challenge. And then they everything. lose the title by two points and sell all the good players to buy And then sell it all. And then it happens again and again and again. They're like good players. They cash in on one a year. They, they cash do, in yeah. on one a year. It's a really yeah. good system, it but it's still a system. It is, yeah. And then you get like Marco Royce who didn't leave and stuff like that. Royce. But the thing with the Bundesliga, like I used to follow FC Köln for a bit. I went to Cologne for a bit. I followed them for a bit. Um, and they they were like mid lower mid table relegation Bother. scrap really. You talk you're talking about like your I don't know not Burn. I'm not going to compare them to Burnley, but like your I don't know like your Leeds kind of Everton kind of team this season. Southampton is a good one. There you go. Southampton's probably the best one, actually. Um, but they would still give... They would lose, but they'd still give you a good game. Yeah. Like, even against like, a Bayern, they'd still turn up and they'd still give everything. So it isn't an easy league. It's just Bayern have this monopoly over everyone else. Yeah. It's just unfortunate in that sense. And I think that's why a lot of people look down on the Bundesliga, but it is still a difficult league to score a million goals in. And and Muller putting in, you know, forty goal was it like forty goal contributions yeah. for however many years on the trot now doesn't get anywhere near enough recognition. And I also think if you're coming back to Kimmich, I put Kimmich in there because I think he's the best six in the world. Yeah. And I genuinely believe that. I think he's better than anyone the Premier League can put forward. I genuinely do. Declan Rice. I, I no, honestly, I think I think Kimmy is 
the real deal. He reminds me he of, is. Uh, of Philip Lahm. He's exactly he literally is just Philip Lahm. Lahm. And he, he's, he, you see he him... even went from right back to CDN. Yeah, yeah exactly. On FIFA. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's had the Philip Lahm uh, the character arc going from right back to CDM and being this really passionate cult hero. I just think Kimmich is the real deal. And, and uh, when you watch him, he's so calm, he's so composed, he he's good. aggressive, he's, he's this, he's that. He's everything you could want in a number six is, is Joshua Kimmich. So for me, he, if you're talking about the best team in the world of individual players, then he's the best six in the world for me. So I'm going to put him in. I'm going to re- represent the Bundesliga a bit. Fair enough. Top three? It I think it speaks for itself, really. I'll go if you want. I'll carry on my monologue. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm going to go Messi because he won the Ballon d'Or. Regardless if he deserved it, he won the Ballon d'Or. He has to be in the team, right? Let's be honest. If, you can't have the person who won the Ballon d'Or not in the team. Lewandowski because he was the best player in the world, <laughs> obviously. And then Mohamed Salah because he was the best player in the Premier League. Who's Mohamed Salah? I only know Pope Salah. Oh, sorry, Pope Haller, as he is known. But, um, yeah, no, for me, I don't really see anyone else who gets No, in. I can't really think of anyone else. No. You'd go with someone the outside. Only, like, I can. The, the only one is Benzema, I suppose. Besmanar. Besmanar, if the, if yeah. the team had a bench, I'd put Benzema on the bench. Benzema's yeah, ben, in my ben, team Benzema. instead of Messi. Really? What? Where's he playing? Even if he's on the Ballon d'Or. What? Where is he playing? He's playing right wing. We're just playing with two strikers and a right wing. <laughs> Vibes. Yeah, if I need to put, I mean, we need a left. If we do need to put in a left wing, and it has, if it has to work as a team, obviously it wouldn't. Benzema would not be in it. If it had to work as a team, hmm. Probably someone like Son. If it had to be an out-and-out left winger. I wouldn't have some. Actually, no, I'd go with Vinicius Junior. That guy is having a mental season. He has a, he's having a mental it's season, but he had, he's had a terrible year. The start and, of the year, the year started with Benzema being convinced that he was playing for the other team. So I don't think he can, he yeah. can get in. I think one that people will argue about is that Mbappe got 72 goal contributions. Did he? Yeah. I didn't realise that. Mbappe I mean, like, French wheat farmers. Yeah. Yeah. But the thing is, I know we don't talk about people winning stuff or not winning stuff, but there's a difference between not winning stuff and not winning league and with PSG. Yes. This is the problem. He didn't win the league at PSG. And And I think he won the Nations League. Yeah, but when they played against... When they played against good opposition, they lost to Switzerland. Yeah, and, and, and he missed, he missed the penalty. Ukraine. Drew to Ukraine. Did they? Uh, I think it was just a friendly, but they played their oh, full team. Yeah, oh, fair Fran- enough. France fair D enough. drew against Ukraine. Fair enough. They started, no, I have back they started Giroud and Gignac up front. Oh my God. <laughs> Gignac is the agile one of the two. Yeah. They let us one Dembele have a game. <laughs> he came out on he but, came out on crutches for the last five minutes. Yeah, yeah, why not? But um, no, for me, Mbappe doesn't get in. For me. Yeah, fair I, enough. I, I just don't. I don't know. I, I just don't see it with Mbappe. I've always yeah. said Haaland for me was my preferred yeah. option out of the two. But none of us put neither Haaland nor Mbappe because they don't fit yet. Okay, they have no. to fit. No, they they don't like fit the system. They don't. Yeah. They're not better than Lewandowski. They're not better than Messi. Well, you that's could it, argue the they're only... not better than Messi at the moment. They're not better than Salah, so they don't fit. That's we the can only reason always use Jared Bowen. That's the only reason. Oh my god, stick James Milner in there. But um, that's fair the, enough. The only reason I the only reason yeah, I couldn't use Bez... the season. Yeah, why not? The only reason I couldn't use Desmanar is because I think he's he's basically a bit like Lewandowski, but Lewandowski scored about seventy goals. Yeah. So I just think you can't not include him. So uh, who, you know who manages his team? Really. Uh, Pep. Pep. Not Pep. Thomas Tuchel. Maybe Nagelsmann. 
but Pep. No, no, it's Pep. For, Pep. for me, Tuchel does, because Chelsea have collapsed in the new year. They didn't collapse last year. Oh, I suppose. <laughs> I guess on the technicality. But yeah, give I it think, Frank Lampard. Yeah, no, I'd, I'd give it Oli. Oli's at the wheel. But I Oli's think, at the wheel. I'm telling well, you, Dave, well. David Moyes would win the league with that team. Anyway, Let's be honest, well. Oli would play a 3 3 4. Yeah, he probably would. He'd just go inshallah and buy. Oli's just, but, um, Oli's just gonna start playing a wheel formation where the players just in a circle. <laughs> just a circle, yeah. But um no, I'd go Pep. I just think Yeah, I yeah, think it's Pep. It. It's just Pep. Like Yeah, I mean I honest. can't argue with you. <laughs> I don't have to think of an argument. Actually it's I can. Pep. I can. Go. No CTM in the Champions League final. <laughs> Oh, that was stupid. Why would you think? Why? Why? But Thank you, mate. I'm, just, I'm, I'm still going to back him. Yeah. yeah. And it the, pains me. I'm still and I'm, I'm sorry, Maxim. I'm just, I'm just attacking your countrymen tonight. He lets Inchenko play in the UCL final. Well, to be fair, it was him or um, the other one. Well, I'm not going to mention. But yeah, it was him or he, had, he, had, he had two options, in fairness, at left back. It, it was either Zinchenko or um, yeah, the other the guy. Bad, Honestly, the bad he's guy. so he's so honestly. I I think Zinchenko's old ball. I know he's a great he, left mid. He's better. He's better left. in midfield. He is yeah, better in midfield. Great left mid. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I don't want to pick on certain players, but I've done it a lot today with the hop, skip, and jump Italian merchant. And a Congolese left back who likes playing Cam. Hop, skip, and jump merchant. That's a new one on me, actually. I haven't heard that one before. <laughs> but you know who I'm talking about straight away. I know exactly who you're talking about, yeah. 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 But yeah, I think we'll leave it there because this is a very heated debate. Yeah. We've got Georgie, Premier League. We've got, oh, just got our Prem predictions, as always, to finish off the. Finish off the yeah. Right, cool. right, so Maxim had to go. Yep. We but we have now. stayed on for what We're we always on. do, Matthias. Yeah. Premier League prediction time. Good old Prem prediction. Stop, probably starting with the worst game of the weekend. Yeah, yeah, we are. Yeah. It is what we in storage. I, I don't think I want to watch this game. I'm going to be honest. This isn't a highlight of my weekend. I might watch honest. it. Really? There will be goals, I think. That's true, probably. Probably. It will be goals. Probably. I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, neither team can exactly defend, can they? Yeah, and Watford can attack. Watford can attack, but... And they're signing uh, another Nigerian uh, winger, because last time they did it, it worked. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true, actually. Yeah, but so... I don't know, I'm, I'll go, like, I don't know, 2-1 or something. To Watford? Yeah, 2 one. Yeah, to Watford. Yeah, I'm going to go three-two oh, Watford. I think the enough. lack of defending. Basically, both teams can't defend. It's an issue. Oh, so, let let let's go with some goals. Yeah. The next one will be interesting. Stevie G travels to Everton. Oh. Aston Villa. I think it'll be two 0 to Villa. Yeah. I don't care how much um, Duncan Ferguson shouts at them; they're still not good. I don't know. But will they get kind of caretaker manager bounce? I fancy Everton. Go on then. <laughs> oddly, 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 I think Everton might nick it because of that new manager bounce. We saw it under Duncan Ferguson the first time. He yeah. took over the first time. They started playing really good football and it wasn't they were playing better football. They just cared more. They passion. just cared more. Do you want instead of breaking the ball, boy? Yeah, yeah. Simply, they cared it. more, and now I think they they could care more again. I'll assume yeah. Coutinho is going to debut fully, obviously. Um, but I I think Everton can nick it like a two one ninetieth minute winner by I don't know the header from the back or I don't know who's injured and who isn't at the back. Yeah. But I was going to say Yerry Mina, but I don't know if he's injured or not. I think he's still injured. Oh, well, it's not going to be Yerry Mina. And Keane though. is rubbish. Yeah, but it's going to be like a corner or something. Yeah. Because that's what Duncan Ferguson's special, I hope they see. 
We're going to bring on Tim Cahill in the 89th. <laughs> Duncan Ferguson's going to sell himself on. Yeah. Wouldn't surprise me, but that game really Wouldn't could go either way. I'm going to back Villa. Good. But it's yeah. just either I'm going to get that bounce or not. Yeah. That's the real question. Next up, we've got Brentford Wolves. Yeah. There's a the result that really screams out to me here. What is it? 1 0 to Wolves. I have 1 0 to Wolves in my head as well. I'm not going to lie. I did have 1 0 Wolves. They in don't my score head. many, but they don't concede many. No, I feel like Brentford might do what they did against us again, which is huff and puff in the first half. Yeah. But unlike what we did, where we kind of just took them apart just systematically because of our quality. Yeah. Wolves will probably have one moment of pure quality from Neves or from Martinho or yeah. whoever it may be. Uh, and then that will that will cost Brentford again. So yeah. Yeah. Quick and I can see that happen- I can see that happening. I'm just looking down the list here at the other ones. The next one is Leeds Newcastle and I've got reasoning for this. I've got two nil Leeds. Yeah. And people say Leeds' defence is leaky, but Newcastle only managed to score once against Watford. Yeah. I, mean, I know other, I know other teams have managed to score only once against Watford. Yeah, shut up. Uh, but, but yeah. Anyway, but yeah. a bit low that one. But anyway, um, uh, I don't know, man. I'm tempted to pack Newcastle. The only reason, the only reason, right, my reasoning behind this is because Leeds are so weird that they may well go and look. It wouldn't surprise anyone, would it? This is, my, this is the thing with Leeds. I have absolutely, like, I'm a United fan. I'm used to not knowing what's going on, like, when we start. I have genuinely got not a single idea when Leeds step on the pitch whether they're going to win 5 0 or lose 5 0. It's, all, it's part of the joy of Leeds. They seem to have re- one really good performance that they did against you and then have a really crap one. Yeah. And I think they're due a bad performance again. So Fair I was enough. back to Newcastle, actually. That's the first <laughs> time anyone did. has said that all season. I'm going to back Newcastle. No, no I'm going to back Newcastle. The next one is I mean. Man United against West Ham. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Do you want to go first or second? Um... I'll go first. Go on, then. Oh, jeez. Um, right, straight out of the way, I think it's going to be a draw. I don't know the scoreline off the top of my head, but I'm thinking 2 all or something like that, something in that region, because I think we can both agree that our best assets are going forward. Yep. Right? And we can both agree that, I think defensively, we're both... Uh, somewhat shaky. Zuma might play. Zuma might play, yeah. But I think if we win the game, the difference maker is going to be David De Gea. Yeah. How how good is De Gea on the day? That's that's the big. That's how it is for Man United right now. Because we yeah, because we know he's going to be good. I, I, this is when the thing is now. Well, I'm going to look a proper pillar now if he like drops the ball into his own net or something, right? But realistically speaking, it's probably going to be good. How good? I don't know, right? If we win the game, it'll probably be after getting battered, and then Ronaldo stewing a ball in from. We do tend to play well something. against you and lose. You do. We right? play well against you and lose. We play well against Arsenal and lose. Also, we haven't had a penalty in a while. So, maybe. We had one penalty. I think we've had two. No, we have three. We have three penalties this season. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't know how many we've had. Lanzini scored two, and Nobles missed one in the league. Yeah, yeah. But I, I don't fancy playing against you, though. With Bowen firing the way he's firing, I think he'll score. Antonio. Antonio bullied for Ran last time. Yeah, my hope is that Rashford is back a bit more. After scoring against Brentford, he I finished hope he Kufau kind of gets last back. Time. Yeah, that's he's my He's the only hope. player that's done that to Kufau. He just rips him. And then I want to see... I want to see Elanga again. I, I, yeah. Every time we play, Elanga really impresses me. 
and I, and I don't think he deserved to be dropped out. It'll be a good battle against. Like that. Could he be up against Cresswell? Uh, he'll be on the left, probably. So he'll be against Kufal. Left cutting in. He'll be against Kufal, probably. Left cutting in. So yeah. Let's see, but I do fancy us to score a couple. Yeah. Because I think we're the kind of team where we can play terribly for 45 minutes, and then once we score one, you we'll get a few. Just, you did, did it happened Brentford. under Ollie a lot. You just had a random 10 minutes where you scored three goals, and you went back That's to being average. That's the way we were. Yeah. We could play terribly for 80 minutes, and then for 10, we'd score three. And then yeah. We'd... But... Yeah. Mm. I, I don't want to back us, but I feel like for the content, I have to back us. So as yeah. much as I said draw, I'm pulling out of the draw. I'm going to go 2-1 United. Yeah, I said 2-2. Two, two. Sorry, 2-1 two, 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 Man United. <laughs> Give me a minute. Yeah, no, two, I one, said... Man United. That could go for charm. older. In fact, if I just say 2-1 United, I, I could be right. Either United way. are going to play well. United will play well. I think oh. United will pick up at least a point. Yeah. But no, no, I, I, th- I think... I think it will be a draw. But for content reasons, I'm going to back United. Okay. Back, I'd say. The next one's easy. Man City 4, Southampton 0. <laughs> yeah. It'll be Not about said. that. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It'll be 3 or 4. Yeah, I've got Arsenal one, Burnley nil. Oh God, yeah. Burnley will, that could still get postponed because Burnley. Yeah, it could do. Have it issues. Could do. It um, could do. Burnley are getting a lot of unfair stick. People are going, oh, they've played seventeen games. Other people played twenty three. Yeah. That what for one's the fair, first one that Burnley themselves have postponed. Yeah, to be fair, like Sean, Dott, I saw the press conference before, and Sean Dott said like the last training session there were literally ten people there. Yeah. Like, there were 10 humans that I can pick from. Unless you want me to go in goal, <laughs> which I really want to see now, more than anything, Sean Dyche in goal. Yeah. Right? I can be goaded between the sticks. I, I saw the dumbest comment about Burnley. Someone went, if they're so short on players, then why did they sell their striker to Newcastle? What? That's not how that works. But anyway, they didn't, they didn't sell him. He was bought for a release clause. But anyway... We'll ignore that. But um, I don't know with Arsenal. I think Arsenal... They might have put a lot into tonight, though. Into tonight, though. That's the thing. I, th- I think they'll beat them still. I yeah. do still think that. If the game goes ahead, I think they'll beat them. Cool. I don't know how convincingly. Palace right. Liverpool. I'll give them a hell of a game. I'll tell you that. Palace give them a good... Is it at Selhurst? Is it Selhurst? That'll be... Cracking watch. I've said one uh, one. Yeah. I still think Liverpool have enough quality. Liverpool struggle at Selhurst. No Salah. They do, no Mane. But, but I still think Liverpool with, with Jota, with presumably Firmino, I think they'll have enough still mm-hmm. to, to get through. Yeah. And to be honest, Christian Benteke getting marked by Zaha. So not Zaha, sorry, Van Dyke. Why am I saying Zaha? Van Dyke. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, I can't imagine that guy. I mean, they did against us at one point. They just got Elise to spam crosses and they brought on Potato and Edward and play all three yeah, of them pretty, in the box. Yeah, pretty much. I can imagine, like, Pal- Palace maybe snatching the lead or something through a corner or something stupid yeah. like that. And then Liverpool just pile on the pressure for 70 minutes or whatever. Yeah. And eventually they'll score two or whatever. No, I reckon so this could be a surprising one, result, though. Could be. Yeah. Could very well be. We've also got Leicester against Brighton. Brighton are involved. It's going to be a draw. Probably going to be a draw. It's going to be a 1 1 with Nil Mope scoring in the 88th. Well, you know what? I don't know. I think they might win it. I don't care. It's mm-hmm. Brighton. It's got to be a draw. I know, but. Everything tells you it should be a draw. Every single piece of information tells you it's going to be a draw, right? But I was watching them against Chelsea, you know, and they were playing good football. They were. With Lamptey, with Lamptey back, they, they're playing really good football. That Moda guy is good. Yeah, Moda was really good. And I think against Leicester, who seems to have forgotten how to defend this year, I think a, a win there for Brighton is possible. I'll be honest. Fair enough. I really, really do. I do as well, but I just think because it's Brighton's got to be a draw. It probably does. 
That leaves us with Chelsea and then some small club from North London. Oh, right, yeah. 2-0 to Chelsea. Spurs just have an ineptitude to play well at Stamford Bridge. That's true. I don't know why, but they do. Well, for me, the game for some reason has nil-nil written on it. I just get that feeling. You think me. that Spurs' defence won't concede? It's not that. I just don't think Chelsea will score. Fair enough. It's not Spurs not being able to defend. I think Chelsea just don't attack well. Yeah. Because realistically, the goal against Brighton came from a, a good effort from Ziyech. The keeper should probably save it. Yeah. Right? That's the goal against Brighton. I don't think... We, we said this earlier. Um, I think with without the wing-backs, Chelsea look a bit blunt at yeah. times. Because Lukaku, realistically, Lukaku is a lump in the box. And a lump in the box needs crosses. He does. And as Azpilicueta is not going to bomb down the right and whip crosses in. Yeah. The thing is... He's not going to do... So, for me, then, I don't know that Chelsea can score. And I don't think they'll concede Chelsea. I yeah. really don't. I, th- I think it'll be one of those games, Chelsea probably have like 70% possession or whatever. And, uh, and Spurs just look to counter. I reckon Jorginho I, penalty. Could be. Could be. Something stupid. Some yeah. stupid challenge from one of the many one of the many Tottenham's in the back. For me, it's going to be Davidson and Sanchez this week. Yeah, Sanchez or yeah, Dyer. I'll tell you, that's the 2 0. Jorginho penalty and Sanchez's own goal. The Sanchez having a terrible game. Fair yeah. enough. I, I just see nil-nil. Yeah, and he has a fight with think, Eric Dyer on the pitch. Yeah, probably. But as I say, I, I think Chelsea are too good defensively, but they're also blunt going forward. They are a bit at the moment. Mason so Mount think, isn't firing. It, de- it depends on who they play, though. Like They've got so many wide players. You, I don't know that Lukaku will play. Havertz was playing well before Lukaku yeah, came back I, in. I, I'll, I'll assume Ziyech will play. So then you've got Werner, who probably could do more damage than Lukaku can, to be honest, mm-hmm. I think. Running at Dyer is always a good way to beat Eric Dyer. Yeah. Um, you've got Pulisic, hudson Adoy, Mount, and Havertz. Yeah. It's not my decision to save players. I don't know. I don't follow Chelsea. I don't really watch Chelsea overly. But, I mean, they each are going to do damage differently, aren't they? Pulisic yeah. is going to yeah. cause real problems with his pace. Havertz and Mount are going to be the creators. I don't really know what hudson Adoy does, to be honest. I don't know anything about Callum hudson yeah. Adoy. But I know he's a talented player. He is. I just get the feeling with, with Chelsea, if they win it, it'll either be with a penalty, a moment of stupidity, or some kind of long shot. Yeah. Slash moment of magic. But it, it won't be like a, a kind of breakdown move. I think it'll either be... A moment of stupidity from the Spurs back line. Yeah. A penalty of some... Or a set piece of some description. Yeah. Free kick or penalty. And then... Or like like, like, like they did against Brighton. Yeah. So, like so we're just there. agreeing. We don't think Chelsea will be troubled too much whatever happens. No, yeah. Regardless, I, th- I think yeah. Chelsea will be okay. Yeah. So I think that kind of wraps it up. Yeah, it does. predictions. Much. Yeah. One more thing. After what's happened, do you have a winner for AFCON? No, just give me the Ooh. name. Nothing else. Just give me a name. Ivory Coast. I'm going to say Nigeria. Oh, Nigeria, a shout. Yeah. Well, there we go. We'll leave it with that. We'll talk more about AFCON as it goes on, of course, leading up to the final. Yep. Ghana are in the mud. In the mud. In the mud. Ghana's in the mud. But that's all from us. Thank you to Maxim for appearing. I'll put his link in the description yep. if he wants me to ask him. Matt, of course, you yours will be there as well. Um, if you want more of me and Matt, because who wouldn't? Watch us play the best football game of all time. It's on the channel right now. Go to videos, oh. go down. It's there, okay? That was brilliant. Watch Lionel Massey against Karim Benesma. It's brilliant. <laughs> but yeah, that's all from us this week. Thank yep. you to our one Spotify listener and anyone that watches it on YouTube. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll see you again soon. Should we carry on doing the um, Tiago until we leave? For anyone's, for our one Spotify <laughs> listener, we're doing thumbs up. 
yeah, yeah. We'll see you soon. Thank you to Maxine. Thank you to Matt. And goodbye. No problem.